What's going on fellows, Tech Steve here, and today we're gonna to take a look at this TV right here. This is the Insignia F30. Now the reason I picked up this TV is because you asked me, we want more budget TVs on this channel, and I'm here to deliver the content that you wanna see. So sit back and relax, let's get started. So this TV is the 55 inch version, but just so you know, they do have it available in a 43 inch all the way up to 75 been the largest that you can buy. Now I got this one at Best Buy, but you can use my links below to pick it up at Amazon as well if you wanna check it out. But let's see what it's all about before we get into all that. So in the box, it shows you how to take everything apart. But the interesting thing is that the feet are kind of taped inside of the box. So you probably have to pull out that plastic piece first to get to everything. Here's the feet that comes with it. They're made out of plastic and they have some metal on the bottom to make them a little bit more sturdier and mount it to the TV. This F30 is powered by Fire TV. As you can see, there's your voice command button right there to trigger that device. And here's a closer look at it. There's a mic on top, voice command, power, navigation, and that's all your different settings, including TV. And at the bottom, there's some hotkeys so you can get easy access to certain applications. All right, so let's go ahead and get it out. And like I always say, they do recommend you use two people to lift these TVs, but I can handle the 55 inch. And of course it comes with the power cord, some batteries, screws for the feet, and inside of here, there's a quick setup guide. Now when mounting the feet, there's a label that shows right, and you can see it right there on the TV as well. Up here we have your power button, and this also duplicates as an input. Down here we have the audio system. As you can see, there's a small speaker inside of there. And then there's some ventilation over here, just so the TV can keep from overheating. One thing I do notice when screwing these feet in is that it's way back in here, so ideal is to have a screwdriver that's magnetic whenever you're installing these. All right, so taking a look at the back of it, it's pretty smooth here on the top and on the bottom here, you see there's some screw holes already set up for mounting on the wall. Taking a look at this TV from the side view, the feet on it are pretty stable and the TV is gonna be rock solid on your table or desk. And it's a little bit thicker right here and on the back of it, there's these ridges on there to make sure that the TV keeps from flexing and things like that. Over here, we have the power cord input and if you plan on mounting on the wall, you can unscrew these and use them as a template to know what size screw that's gonna be needed. Now, when it comes to the inputs, let's go on this side. We have a headphone output, one USB, three HDMIs, and this one does support ARC, not eARC, so it's not gonna support Dolby Atmos output as far as uh, uncompressed. Over here, we have some more inputs like your ethernet, fiber optic output, your AV input, and the TV tuner. So that's what this TV looks like from the backside. So this 55 inch didn't have a screen protector. Basically, it came with a little tape around the edges that I just peeled off. Now keep this in mind, you're gonna need to have an Amazon account or you're gonna set it up in the menu and you're gonna need to have this TV connected to either ethernet connection or the built-in Wi-Fi. So I finally got this TV all set up and I'm gonna tell you, it was a little bit of pain in the butt because you had to log into your Amazon account, your Wi-Fi, and it did about three updates, maybe because it's been on the shelf. But if you wanna save yourself some time, make sure you download this Fire TV application because you can put in your account, it finds the TV, installs everything for you. Now, if you plan on buying this TV, I'm gonna show you some of the features to look for. First of all, this is the home screen. And down here, you have your profiles, you have your inputs, you can uh, tag things, and you can go to live TV. I did plug an antenna into it and I scanned for channels. And you get this on-screen guide, which is cool because it's gonna show you the quality of everything. It's gonna show you all the channels that can find your area. It'll give you a preview. And once it gets started, it will start playing the station right there to the side. Now this TV doesn't have a way to record off the air, but at least you can watch content with antenna or you can use streaming applications. Now back on the home screen, you can add some of your favorite apps right here. And if you click on this last box, you can see all the apps. And then there's a gear at the corner. Now under this gear is where you're gonna see all your presets just for the main part of the television. But if you continue to go down, you can see your inputs, notifications. You can add multiple profiles, your Wi-Fi, and a few other options down here, including the Alexa setup right there. A few other things you can get in here on the display and sounds, you have your picture settings, and you can base your picture settings based off of the applications or the input, so you can choose. There's some sound settings in here, which gives you the sidebar, as you can see over there. And then if you go back in, you can do your display settings. And that's customizable, again, for each input. 
Now this TV also support Apple AirPlay and Apple HomeKit. So you can connect it to your computer, your iPhone or your iPad, no problem. And there's screen mirroring as well as screen savers available. And with the Amazon photo application, you can put all your photos onto a cloud and you can stream one directly to this TV when you're not using it. Just be careful out there. And this is what the application looks like. Plus it has a web browser, your app store, and you can uh, manage your application. And as you can see right there, it has 11.77 gigabytes of built-in storage. All right, so let's get into some picture tests. As always, I use Apple TV. Not that I'm trying to promote them, it's just a service I like to use because I like the iPhone and a couple of devices. But the first thing we're gonna do is go into the settings over here so we can see what type of formats that it supports. Going into the TV menu, you can see that this TV does support 4K, HDR, and SDR. As a side note, this TV does not support Dolby Vision, nor does it support HDR10+, which Samsung uses. But let's take a look at some picture demos. I'll just go ahead and cut the light so we can take a look at it. The first thing I really want to show you is that look at the icons in SDR mode, and now look at them in HDR mode. And this is why you probably wanna watch your content most of the time on SDR, just because I think it makes the colors a much richer, unless you have dedicated HDR content planned through the television. One of the reasons for that is that in SDR mode, this TV will support 444 chroma, but when it's in HDR mode, it supports 422, so you do lose some color capabilities by switching over to HDR. Now I want to play a movie for you and let you see what the colors look like on it, and for me, I was expecting to see a lot of light bleed in the gray areas, but it actually looks pretty good. I mean, this TV's pretty inky, but again, down here in the black bars, you're gonna see a little bit of glow coming through on the television. But let's find a scene here, and then we'll do a picture test to see all the different settings in the televisions to check it out. And again, this is in SDR mode, but if we hit the little gear on the TV remote, you now get this sidebar, and on here we can go down to where it says picture, and let's take a look at some of the different modes. So it looks like it switched over to standard mode. And this is the movie mode, but in my opinion, this TV looks very bland in movie mode, but it all depends on if you like that softer, warmer look. We switch over to dynamic. You can see it brings in a lot more colors as far as the book and the background. Uh, if you don't really like that really bright look, you can switch over to natural. And then we have game, PC, and you can customize it right here at the bottom. And with the customized mode, basically it allows you to go in here and you can adjust these and it saves it as a preset. So you can play with the contrast, the brightness, and your color intent down there, as well as these advanced settings where you can change the dynamic backlights. Uh, doesn't look like it made a big difference. Uh, dynamic contrast. Again, these don't really make a huge difference in the TV, and keep in mind this TV doesn't have local dimming zones, so you're not gonna be able to get that full control across the screen like you can do on some other televisions. But there's all the different options inside of here, and I will tell you one option that I definitely can't see in this TV is a motion control. So like some TVs out there on the market, instead of having motion controls, it uses the built-in picture profiles to automatically adjust the motion for you, which I like the manual access, but uh, We'll go ahead and try out a few tests here to see how well it really performs with motion and some other things. So uh, well, let's go ahead and switch over to HDR and see what we can see as far as the comparison. Okay, so now in HDR mode, again, the movie settings look a lot flatter. And one thing I noticed going back to standard mode, you lose some of those vivid colors. Uh, same thing as dynamic, natural, and again, we have game down here. You can customize it. But just keep in mind, if you use this TV in HDR, I don't think it's gonna look as good as it does on SDR, but that's my personal opinion. And if you own this TV, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now I switched over to YouTube TV and just watch it right now. Um, I can see a little bit of artifacts around the images, so it could be based off the signal run to it. So that tells me that the upscale on this TV is decent, but it's not gonna really make it look like 4K or anything like that. But the graphics on it looks pretty good. I mean, the, you see the orange down there looks pretty good. The contrast looks better than I expected. But in my opinion, whenever you're watching sporting events, anytime you use an IPTV or anything that has low resolution, you're gonna see a little bit of motion blur in this television. And there's no way to adjust it unless you go through the different picture profiles. So I think for everyday TV watching, 
you're going to be overall satisfied. Again, it's going to require you to have a really good source. So IPTV and low quality sources is not going to make this TV look as good as it should. I do recommend you go with uh, something like YouTube TV or something that has a lot of good resolution to get the most out of it. Now let's take a look at the gaming. So I loaded up the Xbox Series X and first thing I want to show you is what this TV can do as far as the resolution. You can see that it is a 4K TV at 60 frames per second and it doesn't support the 120 hertz. As I said earlier, again, it doesn't support Dolby Vision, so you're not going to get those options. Now if I go back into the video settings, um, you can see there's no variable refresh rate and it will support your HDR10 and HDR formats. Now even though this is a 60 hertz television, I'm going to try to override the settings just to see if we can get 120 hertz out of the 1440p or the 1080p, so let's check it out. So what I did is I override the video settings and if we go back here, I have 1440p and there's an option for 120 hertz, but let's see what happens when I try to toggle it. It appears that this TV will handle a 1080p 120 hertz signal, but keep in mind with the refresh rate on this television, it might look a little bit smoother, but this TV is not designed to do that type of hertz, just so you know. As you can see in gaming mode, you do get your auto low latency, but again, no variable refresh rate. So I'm not a big gamer, but let's try this one out. See how good I can do. I really love these racing games. Ooh, now, we, now we're moving. Just gotta be a little careful around these tight curves. <laughs> Got a little squirrely on me, but you know, as far as the game being, it looks like it's, it's gonna do good. Up here, there's some nice blue levels. Uh, there's not a lot of shadow details back here, but you know, it's presentable. And you know, the colors, on the speedometer, the car, they're pretty neutral, nothing amazing, but you can go in and adjust that. But as far as gaming, I think you're gonna have a good experience. You gotta look at this as a TV that you're not spending two grand on. So there you have it. And the last thing I want to do is check out the input lag. So I did put the TV in gaming mode over there. And this is a 1080p tester that runs up to 60 Hertz. So uh, still waiting to buy a 4K tester when they make one, but I guess it's a challenge without using a computer. But uh, let's go and see what kind of lag we get. That's not looking good. Looks like 34.2, but let's check a few settings before we make it the final analysis. So I tried to trick it out by going down here and change it to the HDMI 2.0 mode, 34.2 milliseconds. So the response time is really not as good as I would like it to be. But unless you're an avid gamer, you might not notice, but for a lot of people who want that really uh, fast action, there it is. That's your input lag with a 1080p tester. The last thing I want to do on this video is show you some picture test. And this is a gradient screen. And as you can see that the gradient on this television is not as smooth. And this is in standard mode, but watch what's happening when we switch over to movie mode. As you can see that it gets so much more clearer as far as the gradient, but it gets a lot blurrier, so you do lose some of the details in the picture. Back on dynamic, again, you can see those images pop up. It's much smoother on natural, and it's better on gaming and PC as well. Now, when it comes to blooming, you might see just a little bit, not too bad, but you will see the black lights on a full black screen like this one right here. But again, we're looking at a TV that's going to perform pretty good considering everything. As far as upscaling, this is what the TV looks like on a 720p signal. And I can see some pretty good details. Um, you can see just a little bit of trailing again with the motion. And again, it could be in the mode that it's in. But let's switch over to 4K and see if we can see a difference. Switching back over to 4K, it is very noticeable to me here live in the studio that the 4K signal does look a lot better. So the upscaling works uh, pretty decent, but I do believe that the 4K signals natively to the TV is definitely gonna give you a much solid picture overall. And this is very surprising. When it comes to uniformity, it's doing better than a lot of TVs that's even more expensive. I don't really see too much shadow uh, around the edges or vignetting. Uh, so except for just a slight bit, the TV panel is pretty solid all the way across and that's pretty surprising. And this is a test that shows the different levels going from black all the way up to the white. And again, the TV panel is pretty consistent uh, as it goes back down to the black levels. Let's see how it changes. 
And again, the uniformity on it is pretty impressive and I don't think you're having problems with that whatsoever. And here's a skin tone test. Uh, as far as the mode that it's in right now, it looks pretty natural. But let's go into the menu and see what some of the different uh, picture profiles look like so we can see how it changes. So currently we have it on movie mode and you can see that the menu is on the side. Ooh, look at that dynamic. It really brings out the details and that's kind of like what I like, that brighter detailed picture. But again, each to his own as far as the resolution. Uh, here's the natural. And again, to me, it looks really good. Uh, let's go back up to the standard mode. And again, for everyday TV watching, the standard mode is going to be good as well. But again, if you like watching your TV every day on movie mode, it's your choice. But I still prefer the standard mode or the dynamic mode. But then again, there's the movie mode if you like that warm look. Now, as I expected earlier, the motion on this TV is not that good and there's no way to control it. And I can see where people are getting frustrated, but let's try the different picture profiles just to see if I was right about having different motions. So let's go and pull that up. All right, so currently we're on movie mode. Let's go back over to standard. And again, no major changes. Let's go to dynamic, no changes, natural, game, PC. So there you have it. The motion is not gonna be all that great. And I can see where people, again, are getting frustrated. So you're probably wondering, what's my true thoughts on this television? Well, I will tell you this. For the average consumer, I think it's perfectly fine. But if you're one of these type of people who love to get the inky contrast ratio, it's decent on there, but it's not gonna be as dark as you would get on some of the other TVs that has full array local dimming. Also, I would say the menu system is pretty responsive. Everything that Amazon built it's pretty fast, so I think for the operation of the television, it's gonna be great. Now, when it comes to a couple of things Amazon is doing, uh, if you have Prime uh, membership, you have to pay $3 more, or if not, you're gonna have a ad in front of every video that you watch now, which is really promoting Amazon products based off of your search history, so that's something to be aware of. Now, when it comes to the colors on this TV, I think they're good, but they're not as the most accurate thing that you might see. But for the average person, I think you'll be happy. And when it comes to gaming, I think gaming's great on this television, but with the input lag been over 30 milliseconds, you might notice some tearing in the screen. Also tested out the gradient on it. It wasn't that great unless you put it in movie mode. So the whole thing about this television, if you're looking for something on a budget and you understand exactly what you're buying, I think for some people, this is gonna be a great television. The fact that you have voice command built in, you can control your lights in your home. The fact that you can upload your family pictures into the Amazon cloud and display them on the screen, all these are great things. But as far as a recommendation, again, it all depends on your budget and what's the right thing for you. And use this video as a reference. And again, if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave all those links in the description below. I'm Tech Steve, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you on the next one, peace.